Good morning. So all I want to say is good morning. Thank you. Everybody in the back. <laughs> Thank you for joining me this morning. Now, we had a little interruption just a minute ago when I was uh, trying to record the podcast. <laughs> Elijah Bailey show where we talk about comics, anime, video games, <laughs> and all the above. So, uh... Now that we're back, now that the good graces, the good graces of God have bestowed us with a better connection, we're here right now talking to you through the airwaves. Brothers, sisters, take this journey with me. Read the title of the stream. Is Lupin? Lupin the third? Is he still burning? That's what we want to know. And today, I like to take your hands. If you like anime, I want to guide you down the street, around the corner, to the left, on the outside of the neighborhood. That's beyond the fence into the world of favorite of burglary of taking shit that ain't yours into the world of Lupin <laughs> the bird and his friends and his gang so let us take a turn. And let us try to get things underway. As our good friend Arsene Lupin makes his way to the 249th episode of The Elijah Bailey Show. Okay, okay, okay. What's up, folks? Hey, thank you. Thank you for joining in. Thank you for uh, holding with me while the internet uh, came back around. Everything got fucked up just for a minute. But this is the 249th episode of The Elijah Bailey Show. And you know what? We're talking about a lot of shit. First things off the bat, let's just, let's just hit on this. Microsoft hit us with some bullshit the other day talking about gold or live was yeah xbox gold xbox live whatever the fuck it is now i just pay for my i know i get game pass i love the fucking game pass but that bitch was about to be 120 bucks i was like shit we'll rock with game pass if we can just pay for that shit and then i'll just game on playstation they came out today did a 180 they're about to make a couple of things free they said they said they're about to make uh, most of the game pass games for free which i think they're going to keep exclusive titles 
um, and then uh, premieres and shit like that for the Game Pass if they're going to make everything else free for all members and they're going to get rid of the, the fucking tiers for Xbox Live. So we can look forward to that, but that bullshit off the bat hit, hit kind of hard. Now, if you're new to the show, this is the Elijah Bailey Show, but today is very special. This is the Bailey Bugle. The Bailey Bugle is the fourth uh, episode of the month. So each week we have a different topic every week. First week is comics, second week is anime, third week is video games, fourth week, which is this week, is the Bailey Bugle. And if there's a fifth week in the month, we just hit on whatever. Think of today's show kind of like the fifth week of the month. I'm doing it by myself per the use lately because like i said buckety is making black and studios a bigger and better place uh for all the podcasts and our broadcasts that are coming from the studio of course i'm doing this here at the home studio as you can see we got uh gorilla grogu over there sitting there holding the sign out uh you got the manga funko's anime on the wall but we are still a black and studios production the podcast started with the show with no name at Black and Studios, at the first studio of Black and Studios. So we're still with Black and Studios. We're still rocking strong and hard after, God, it's almost been five years, dude. God, that's crazy. Five years, three YouTube pages, um, one, two, three, four, five podcasts I've been on. Uh, fuck, five six seven of like 12 podcasts i've produced all kind of shit's happened since we've done this show but i digress again this is the fourth uh episode of the the month and so i'm gonna d dive into lupon the third we're just gonna do the bailey bugle now first things first uh usually for these episodes i do back in the body shop me and buck talk about what we've been doing and i kind of mentioned this on a, a previous show uh, for my exercise, one, I'm an essential worker, so I'm still working all the fucking time, uh, pulling pallets and shit like that. But roller skates. Jessica got me some roller skates for Christmas. I got her some blades or some skates for Christmas as well. So we've been out skating a couple times uh, and doing that. And then other than that, just stretch my hamstrings really tight. I feel like I have like a slight, I want to say, you know, just, mm, just a nice little t sprain. I don't want any more tears. I've torn my right hamstring before doing martial arts back in the day that shit sucked because it was like six months of rehab and physical therapy and it, it sucks because it's right where the leg meat meets the ass in that crevice where it creases and you can't do shit about it because you have to walk everywhere so it sucks trying to keep that leg and shit straight um but i digress go ahead and there's no body shop but what i am going to do is dive into uh, Tayo says, so if you haven't been with the show, every episode we celebrate a character of color. Uh, today I found this comic um, for our comic book uh, episode, our comic week, and I mentioned it. Now, I, I, the title is weird. It's called Bitch Planet was the title. I showed you the cover. The cover looked really cool, gave you a synopsis. Hopefully you guys jumped into it. But today we are going to dive into the character Kamau Congo. And I think it's Camo, Kama, Camo Congo. Well, they call her Cam. And that's what I go <laughs> go by. It's just the short, the short abbreviation Cam. Here's a better uh, picture of her. This is what you see her wearing throughout uh, the series on Bitch Planet, and here is the cover of Bitch Planet. Now, again, let's go through uh, just a little bit of the details. Um, other name is Khan. First appearance, Bitch Planet issue number one, which released 2014. And the cool thing about this is it's by one of my favorite comic writers, um, Kelly Sue DeConnick, who wrote the Captain Marvel storyline, which uh, was a huge inspiration for the Captain Marvel that we got in the MCU. But it's not only just by Kelly Sue DeConnick, but also Valentine De Leonardo, published by Image Comics. Uh, she's a smart, uh, she's smart and ready to fight. Cam Congo uh, admirably works uh, to defend her fellow prison inmates in Bitch Planet. So Bitch Planet is this planet to where you get sent if you're an outlaw. If you go through this algorithm and it finds you um, deemed worthy to be sent to Bitch Planet, you, you're sent there. And it's, it's real graphic. It's, uh, it's, it's a nice comic. You guys got to just dive into it. But um, she works really hard to defend her fellow inmates at Bitch Planet. Uh, in what's billed as a feminist dystopia with the influence of the 60s and 70s women in prisons movie, 
Congo definitely brings the punch. Um, with a set of martial arts skills, she heads the uh, Megaton sports team, similar to rugby, in hopes to make her escape from the dangerous uh prison planet so kind of like gladiator trying to fight your way out fight your way to freedom uh the cool thing is she don't take no shit she whoops ass she stands up for her friends and it's a good ride so cam congo is the character of the episode this episode and remember each episode you get a new character whether it's video games anime comics uh, wherever and these characters uh, these people look them up look up the voice actors look up everything that they do because they they're in some really interesting things and it's crazy to have as few um, characters of color that we do uh, the ones that we do have are very impactful to the series that they're a part of so make sure to check those out uh, next um, let's go ahead and just dive right into it because this is there's a lot here there's a lot of big topics now let me see if I can pull this up first. This happened earlier, uh, like a few days ago. Now, you've heard me talk about this uh, probably about a handful of times because we've talked about the Netflix adaptation, me and Buck, uh, the, the animated adaptation. Then we talked about um, the, the films, you know, talking about Monarch and what this means for <clears throat> our favorite character, uh, Godzilla. But then we got Kong, and we saw Sam Jackson in it, and uh, Brie Larson, and you know all these all these motherfuckers in it. And you go, like, okay, so he's defending the deal. He's a baby gorilla. He's not like fully grown. So what's gonna happen? Well, we got the trailer for Godzilla versus Kong, and I want to play that bitch. I'm trying to find the uh, the version I had. Um was watching yesterday because that shit looks so good now if you don't know anything I, my mom came on one of our earlier episodes pff, like within the 20s like our 24th episode i think it was mother's day that she came on and we were talking about some of the stuff that we used to watch when i was younger and actually uh if i can go ahead and get this going i think i can pull this up now so what you're gonna see just uh you know right across from my face or a little bit over my face this is going to be the uh, motherfucker let's do this boom let's move you over here and let's change this up doing it on the fly there okay so you're going to see godzilla right here uh, in the bottom right hand of the corner and i'm going to talk about this so when my mom came on the show we were talking uh, she was talking about some of the things that we did when uh, I was younger. Uh, we watched Thundercats together. We watched G.I. Joe. We watched Ninja Turtles, uh, John Wayne movies, Elvis Presley shit, Gidget. Uh, and then there was King Kong and Godzilla. There is no, I don't even know how many times I've seen these films, but this right here. Now, uh, Skarsgård, who played Eric Northman in True Blood, which I think they're getting ready to reboot, is coming back. But we see like King Kong there are actually people on the island and King Kong does protect them. This little girl, which it always has to be like a little girl, like a little teddy bear. He's, he's going to be her protector. Um, and they're making Godzilla the bad motherfucker in this film. And you know what? I don't care. They're fighting. You've got my money. I don't want to go to the theater to see this shit. I want to see this shit at home. I've enjoyed that. I've enjoyed being in my bubble away from the COVID riddled motherfuckers watching good movies. Now, hey, look at this shit. They're shooting bombs at Godzilla. He's swinging the tail. Uh, and me and Jessica were watching this the other day. She's like, don't they know that bombs and shit feed his radioactivity? They may, they may not, but what else do they have? Bam, that's what they have. King motherfucking Kong. He climbs aboard and they just start going at it. Kong is, I mean, we need a king of monsters. We had king of all monsters, which Godzilla beat, you know, everybody else. But this is an ancient rivalry that these are the last two of their kind standing. And so um, somehow King Kong turns into Donkey Kong and gets like a swatum stick and gets to fight the giant lizard Godzilla. But I'm loving this, dude. Like you see here, he's kind of figuring out shit. And Kong being a gorilla, being very expressive in the face is different than Godzilla. Godzilla is just this big lizard. He frowns his brow, but really it's like this motherfucker's here to fuck shit up. Kong's the one that's going to emote everything. But look at this. He's double fisting him over the 
fucking head. We don't need the human component. This is all we need. The bright lights, the fucking laser, radioactive laser, the staff, or the axe, Godzilla vs. Kong. That's what I'm here for. HBO Max, all the good shit coming to us um, later this year. Uh, I'm excited for it. It's one thing that I've always wanted to uh, kind of see told now. Because we've seen a lot of good stuff. We've seen Brian Cranston in the Godzilla films. We saw uh, the King, the God, King of All Monsters, where uh, Millie Bobby Brown played, and we're getting a lot of you know double crossing from humans. But really, we're here, we're there to see the monsters. So that's what I'm waiting for, uh, Godzilla. Now, without should we take a break? Uh, it's only yeah. You know what? Let's take a quick pause for the cause, and we'll be right back. And we're gonna go right into Lupin the Third. folks oh, let me turn down on my side so I had to turn it up just to make sure it's playing the shit I wanted it to <laughs> so okay uh, so we are back now oh you know what I ah, fuck it fuck YouTube dude YouTube be fucking up too much shit maybe they be fucking up my vibe so um, let's go ahead and do it today's topic is one of my it's up there on my list, and it is because the story's good. Uh, the story's great. The voice acting, the dubbing in English is great, um, and the Japanese voice cast is great as well. Which one is this? Oh, no, I don't want that one. That's a good one. We want the, uh, we want the, oh, there we go. We want the adult snow one. Fucking, I don't really give a shit about this Capella University. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I can play a little bit of it for you. They ain't about to hit me with no copyright suit for this shit. Because this is not something that is uh, American owned, but... That's that. That's that. Lupin the Third. If you ever watched Adult Swim, you know what I'm talking about. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah. 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 Turn that shit right off. Go very low. Turn it right off. But that's Lupin the Third. Lupin the Third is a French tale. Now, the way that I describe this on a little bit of anime, which is another podcast that you can listen to, which is devoted to all anime. 
is that he is France's response to Britain's Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes, like, we have Batman, of course. Uh, Britain has Sherlock Holmes, and uh, the French, they have Arsene Lupin. Now, the books, uh, as told in there, and there's several parts to this, because we talk about just Lupin itself, um, there's a Netflix series, there's a 3D adaptation, there's an anime adaptation, and there's the books. The Netflix series takes after the books, which is something that is common in French households. So, um uh, Let's dive into Arsene Lupin the third because this is just a little bit different than the book. So Arsene Lupin the third, a fictional character created by Kazuhiko Kato, aka Monkey Punch, as the protagonist of his manga series Lupin the Third, which debuted in the weekly sh- uh, manga action on August 10th of 1967. According to his creator, Lupin is a grandson of Maurice LeBlanc's gentleman thief, Arsene Lupin. And a gentleman thief uh, is what uh, the character of Maurice LeBlanc's books. Uh, was he was somebody that was suave that had character and kind of played into the development of Lupin the Third, as you'll hear in a bit. Acknowledged across the globe as the world's number one thief, Lupin Lupin is a master of disguise and detection. Uh, get out of here, Chewy. Marksman and inventor of numerous handy gadgets. His fun-loving, foolhardy um, covers a brilliant mind. So his exterior, he he's always going to be. I relate him a lot to Luffy, as in he speaks his mind for the most part. He's very fun-loving, he's very flamboyant, but he is also kind of like Shikamaru without the laziness. He has just a brilliant mind, and it's it's always hard to uh, to get one over on uh, Lupin. No matter who you are, his friends, his enemies, um, his greatest rival, as such, he has been responsible for heist... Uh, yeah, for heist, no right-minded individual would believe is possible. Uh, while occasionally arrested and jailed, typically by his ICPO nemesis, Inspector uh, Koichi Zenigata, he always succeeds in escaping unharmed. Uh, the original manga differs significantly uh, compared to the fam- fan- family-friendly anime incarnation. Uh, through its explicit depiction of sex and violence, with Lupin's character also differing as a result. Additionally, he and his famous gang, beautiful Fujiko Mine, cool trigger man Daisuke Jigen, and samurai Goemon Ichikawa the 13th, rarely work together in the manga version, but are nonetheless an in, uh, inseparable team in various anime productions. And you kind of see in the OVAs that kind of differs. Lupin might be with Jigen. His, he's his oldest friend. Uh, Goemon was a rival before they worked together. And Fujiko, you'll kind of hear you know, what the creator's thoughts are on this. And we're talking about Monkey Punch, the creator of Lupin the Third, because we're going to dive into the anime because I love the anime. Now, the books, if you do want to listen to the books, uh, there's audio books on YouTube. If you want to read them, you can find them on Amazon. You can order them. Uh, they're in my wish list. I have... Um, uh, Sherlock Holmes here, and this is just the first one. Um, so Sherlock Holmes, Lupin, it's all good shit to read. Uh, the stories are, are kind of funny. The very first story that comes up is the train where well, Lupin gets arrested by Guinea Ma, who is um, what Monkey Punch developed as uh, Zenigata. So um, the aim of Lupin the Third series was to produce a comedy adventure series that reflected the traits of LeBlanc's Arsene Lupin character. Originally, the um, intention was to keep the blood ties between the two fictional characters secret. However, Monkey Punch was convinced to uh, by others not to do so. He combined elements of Arsene Lupin and James Bond to develop the character of Lupin the Third and made him a carefree fellow. In the original manga, Lupin and his team typically work individually uh, for their own goals. The, aus- the author explained it is only in the anime that they frequently operate together, suspecting some unwritten rule that all five main characters have to appear in every episode. He believed that Lupin and Fujiko are similar to characters of... Uh, Dearta Nan and Milady de Winter, um, 
and describe uh, describe them as not necessarily lovers and not necessarily husband and wife, but more just having fun as man and woman with each other. Inspector Zenigata was conceived as Lupin's arch rival uh, to create a human Tom and Jerry. Monkey Punch said the appeal of drawing Lupin comes from the character being able to go anywhere uh, without obstacles and being able to do whatever he wants whenever he wants. However, this is uh, contrasted by the appeal of Zenigata's strict personality. The creator uh, has said that he believes that Lupin the third story can never end, um, but that if he had to, both Zenigata and Lupin would have to end as rivals. And you see that in every episode, Zenigata might take him into Interpol in handcuffs and Lupin detaches his hand or he breaks his wrist and gets out of the cuff and disguises himself as Zenigata. There's two Zenigatas, the old two, two me prank, and they arrest the wrong one and he always gets out of everything. Um, but he said they would either both fail, both win, or both get very old. And even in this latest incarnation, which would be the seventh season, but eight, uh, but f- fifth part of Lupin, there's no resolution. They even bring up retirement, but that, that doesn't happen at the end of it. Um, the last thing that Monkey Punch says is it is uh, in typical anime style, Lupin's appearance is uh, racially ambiguous and he ties it up saying that he's half Japanese and half French, um, but he has a swagger that is worldly. That's why he can do anything. Um, But one of the things that he had to make sure happened was the change of jacket. So outside his uh, preference for uh, large and rather plain boots, Lupin is a sharp dresser. He typically wears a button down shirt, tie, chinos and brightly colored sports jacket exclusively red in the manga. While in animation, his jacket in various colors, um, which color code his TV series. So he wears the green jacket for part one and a few OVAs. Um, and the woman called Fujiko Mine. So those are always the part one or the very beginning, the very first season or series of Lupin. Uh, The red jacket is part two and most films and television specials. And then the pink jacket is part three. uh, And the blue jacket he wore for part four and part five. Uh, In some images, Lupin is depicted as being cross-eyed. However, this is just uh, an issue with the comic. It is not a physical, physical characteristic or a play on uh, the pictures of old samurai that were drawn. So if you have not watched Lupin at all, uh, when I saw it, it came on Adult Swim. And I think that's where most people caught it, on Adult Swim, which for us in Oklahoma is Channel 52, if you had Cox. And you come home, um, you watch through everything, Sailor Moon, Ronin Warriors, which is fucked up because it's called Samurai Troopers, but they couldn't get that uh, to translate over for the title. Well, We'll talk about that on another episode, but you watch that, you watch Samurai Pizza Cats, Dragon Ball Z, um, a reboot would come on, then there'd be kind of like a little lag, you go watch some other shit, do whatever, you come back home, and then, you know, Adult Swim, Toonami, uh, the late night Toonami would start up, and Lupin would be in that block, and Lupin even, I remember traveling to Dallas a couple times, and when we went to Canada in uh, 2012, and I just, all throughout Middle school to now, I've seen Lupin on TV regularly just turning the shit on. So it's very popular. It's something you guys got to check out. But if you haven't, the picture in the corner is the green jacket. That's part one Lupin. But you're going to see some other versions of him. So uh, do I have... Actually, yeah, let's go ahead and pull up a trailer of this shit. Now, again, like I said, part two. That was the version of Lupin that I saw. Um... Is this the right, where's the right TV? Actually, we'll just skip to this. We'll go to, which one is it? This one, we're gonna, I'm gonna play the animated because there's a 3D version of Lupin that is just now coming out or maybe it already has released. And I want to see it because the characters, again, they're 3D, but it still is the same Lupin. So as we go through it, you can read at the bottom. But, you know, Lupin, again, is being chased in the car. And one of the things I like about Lupin, it's like a animated Ocean's Eleven. Because you have Lupin, who's always scheming, who there's our scene Lupin right there. Then you have uh, his best friend and marksman, Daisuke Jigen, who is... He's a little bit older than Lupin. 
Yeah, I mean, like a couple, like at least five years. Again, there's Lupin comedy, and he just it seems like this old old man that's always smoking, that's always hurt. But when the time comes, he's ready. There is Goemon right there with his sword and Fujiko Mine making, uh, making some. I don't know who that character is. I think that's going to be the person that Lupin helps. Now, Lupin, being a gentleman thief, he st- he has more money than he knows what to do with. He has everything that he wants. He usually steals for fun. Um, and we'll kind of talk about this in part five once we look at that trailer. Um, so what is it that he he's usually doing something to, to gain more information? He likes collecting things, but he also likes helping people as well. It's kind of like a checks and balances. He is the thief that he wants to be. He's willing to whis- risk it all for whatever it is. And he d- he likes doing the right thing because I think he's seen enough by the time that he takes up the mantle of Lupin the third, uh, even before he meets uh, Jigen, he's seen enough of the world that he knows what he wants to do. And part five that I'm going to talk about, we kind of dive into that, but I think the live action version of Lupin taking from the books that Maurice LeBlanc wrote really highlights what this anime was all about and where they pulled from. Now, again, this is a, this is a very, very fun comedy. Uh, it's always fun. There's always like a case of the week. There's always something going on. So it's the book mainly takes from different instances in Lupin's past. Uh, and again, the very first uh, case that I heard about was he gets arrested by Guinea Ma on the train, but it's from his perspective once you you wrap it all up that it's not that long of a read it's not a spoiler but when you think about Lupin telling his own story of his own arrest the demeanor in which the story goes and the tone as you read is just very gentleman like and it speaks to that version of Lupin um let me go ahead and pull up the trailer for part 5 so let me give you the rundowns on Lupin the Third Part Five because this was, it was a fun watch. I did not think that Lupin the Third could come back and be even more interesting than it was. So in this season, Genius Thief Arsene Lupin the Third, along with his usual crew of uh, Goemon Ichikawa the Thirteenth, Fujiko Mine, and Daisuke Jigen, finds himself in modern day France, where he encounters both new and old adversaries, while Inspector uh, Koichi. Koichi's and Igata still hot on his trail. Uh, as they steal from darker and more sinister ent- entities, they will also uh, have to find a way to deal with the newest technology in their escapades, as well as face the ghosts of their past. However, this time Lupin's choice uh, choices begin to catch up with him as the pressure um, and the pursuits use e- pursuers use every tool at their disposal to take him down. Now, what was cool was. Lupin has evaded everything. This takes from today's technology, from being able to use, and let's uh, let's run that back again, being able to use your facial recognition, everybody's phone, there's a deal called People Log that you can take a picture, and from everything that's recorded, it gives it a rating system. That rating system tells you how reliable it is, but if everybody is looking for Lupin because Lupin screwed over these hackers, there's nowhere he can hide. Everybody's got a phone. Everybody can see where they go. And that's where the season starts. And that's how it really showcases who he is. Now, again, you see him fighting here. He's not afraid to get his hands dirty. He's a marksman, swordsman, race car driver. You see him in the Formula One in the very first episode in part one of the beginning of Lupin, but part five was special to me because it tied in and gave you even more like there are so many more things that I will be surprised by uh, with Lupin because of how they did this film. Um, And it really is about unlocking his secrets. Uh, One of the main things is like if Lupin is spotted by everywhere, we can connect where and pinpoint where his hideouts are, where he's been, or you know, find a p- specific trail he's going to go on. So there's nowhere he can hide. And throughout all these episodes, and I think it was 25 episode season, it was beautiful how they tied everything along because Goemon got an episode, Fujiko got an episode, uh, Jigen got an episode, and every season they do that same thing. They break it down to each character getting an episode, each character's back story or history expanding even more, and it was it was beautiful. And at the very fucking end of it, 
I watched this on Hulu. If you have a Hulu account or a Crunchyroll, you can see it there. But the 50th anniversary special was there. Now, if you're not a Lupin fan and you didn't know by the title of this episode, I said, is Lupin still burning? That was the episode title for the 50th anniversary. And why that is special is because the very first episode of Lupin the Third, the anime, part one, season one, is uh, is Lupin burning. And it was the Formula One racing uh, episode, Green Jacket Lupin, had to chase off people that were fucking with his car at the very beginning. And it was it, amazing. I loved it. Uh, and then they just paid homage to that after Viva Lupin the Third, which was an episode where, I mean, Fujiko asked Lupin to put it on the line and tell him what they meant to each other. And after all the episodes, after all the escapades, after all the fights, all the battles, Fujiko coming in and screwing him over, Lupin stealing shit from her, back and forth, him getting married, she getting jealous, all this shit. That's how you that's how you tie in anime. And he Monkey Punch is going on to say that Lupin can keep going on uh, recently, not just like past interviews. He thinks there's more Lupin to come, which I think after that 3D animated film that's coming out, which I think is going to be amazing. Uh, we're going to get more of it, but, uh, here's a couple of things I wrote down while I was watching. It's like, even though we're on the eighth season of Lupin, it feels like the very first time I watched Lupin. I really think this incarnation, uh, feels like the uh, second part of Lupin, which would have aired on Adult Swim back in the nineties. I love the thought that Lupin and his crew are so notorious that the underworld is after them, but, uh, now in the modern age with technology, this concept stretches the imagination of how the old school thief, uh, lives in the modern world. I love the homages to the fight and rivalry between Goemon and Lupin, the skill of Daisuke Jigen, the relationship of Fujiko and Lupin, uh, and the cat and mouse game of Lupin and Zenigata. This is one of my all-time favorite anime. I was really pleased with the narrative and the 50th anniversary homage to the first episode of Lupin called Is Lupin Burning? And the anniversary OVA is called Is Lupin Still Burning? I give it a 10 out of 10 rating for the entire fucking season. That is my review. I, I didn't think I was going to get pulled in. And this came out in 2018. And I watched it probably, I think it was probably six months after it aired. And now I didn't pick it up again until now. Not saying I don't want to watch the 3D version. I've seen the Japanese live action. I've seen a European live action Lupin. I, I just haven't seen that yet. And I went back and watched this guy saw it on Hulu. And it's just like, dude, that's the same way I felt when I very first watched it. So again, Lupin the Third is great. This is part five that I'm talking about. Again, this is the eighth season of Lupin the Third. It is a series franchise uh, created by Monkey Punch. But you can start wherever you want and get in. The the but the best thing is you you understand the relationships because they're working with each other. Then the bickering back and forth, like, oh, these motherfuckers know each other for a long time. So you don't have to jump in and start at the first season. Because, again, when I was watching Adult Swim, I started on season two, part two. So I had to go back to uh, part one and see the green jacket. Then I went to the pink jacket. And then now we have the blue jacket. So you don't have to start uh, at the beginning. Um Let's get into this one. Let me go ahead and pull this one up because this trailer, this did things to me. Like I saw a picture of this and I talked to Buck about this, but we have the live action Lupin the Third, uh, starring Omar Sy. I do believe is how you say the name. A wonderful French actor. Uh, the story follows professional thief Asan Diop. Uh, and it's D-I-O-P, but it's uh, it's French, so dip. Uh, the only son of an immigrant from Senegal who had come to France to seek a better life for his child. Hassan's father is framed for the theft of an expensive diamond necklace by his employer, the wealthy and powerful Hubert Pellegrini, and hangs himself in his prison cell out of shame, leaving the teenager Hassan an orphan. 25 years later, inspired by a book about gentleman thief, Arsene Lupin, his father had given him on his birthday, Hassan, uh, sets out to get revenge on the Pellegrini, uh, 
Pellegrini family using his uh, charisma, mastery of thievery, subterfuge, and disguise to expose Hubert's crime. Um, I loved it. Uh, And there's the second part of the live action Lupin is coming out later this year. And it's five episodes. It was ordered for a 10 episode season. And I can't wait for the next season. You get the from the books, the Arsene Lupin and Guinema rivalry or the Lupin the third and Zenigata. Um, You get these unbelievable, you know, robberies that could happen. But knowing how Lupin works, and he typically works alone, but he does have friends that he uses from time to time or works with, it is easy to kind of see what he's planning or what he's going to do for some of these capers. If you know the books, you already know what's going to happen, but they do it with such style that it's completely different than what you were thinking. Uh, The cast is Omar Asai as Asin Dip, Victor Londez as Captain Roman Logier, uh, Ludvin Sagner as Claire, Clotaldi, fuck, I don't know, uh, as Juliet Pellegrini, Nicole Garcia as Ann, Anna, Anna Pellegrini, uh, Herve Perry as Hubert Pellegrini, Sofan Gerab as Yusuf Gerdira, uh, Anthony Gao as Benjamin Farrell, uh, Fargas Asande as Babarka Dip, which is Asin's dad that hangs himself in the prison. Uh, Shireen Botella as Lieutenant Sophia Bleka. And I'm sorry I'm butchering your name. This French is, is not a strong suit of mine. <laughs> I guess I got to get started on it. And then Etan Simone as Raul, who is, as we know, well, if you guys don't know yet, if you haven't watched it, you got to watch it. Again, 10 episode series released in two parts. Uh, Les Colères de la Renée. I'm not even going to read the titles. They're, they're chapter one, two, three, four, five. It's going to take each episode is going to be like a chapter from a book. I think they're an hour long at the most. Um, here's some notes that I took down. I said this was so refreshing. Uh, I didn't know how Netflix was going to going to try and bring uh, to life Lupin after years of seeing him as an anime character uh, in the books. And I knew that a new 3D film was on the way uh, to have the story be a story of revenge and inspir- inspired by the books. Uh, the source of Arsene Lupin was amazing. Uh, I love the story of uh, a scene avenging his father's suicide after being framed. The fifth episode uh, series part one that covers the beginning of the revenge plan felt fast paced and perfect uh, to leave things on a very annoying and interesting cliffhanger. I loved it even in subtitles. Again, this is all in French, so you have to read it in subtitles. Well, actually you can change to the dub, but I, the dub's okay. I think uh, the voice of a scene is um, Michael J. White. So, but the other voices are kind of off again, it's dubbing. And we all know how, you know, dubbing over kind of sounds. If you look at the old uh, Kung Fu films, it's kind of how it is. Even in subtitles, I gave this series a solid 8 out of 10 so far. Um, And that's because I don't know how they're going to recreate every single tale of Arsene Lupin. But what they created uh, right now uh, showcased a world of thieves that I didn't think was going to happen again since I'd seen Blacklist. And Blacklist has been my my, um, Lupin uh oh yeah yeah those yeah those 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 names were 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 crunch time um but yeah blacklist was my my lupon the third for i don't know forever for however many fucking seasons it's out because raven reddington could go anywhere everybody knew his name but he was he was kind of cold-blooded now we've seen lupon be cold-blooded before but not usually it's for a purpose he's usually like hey you don't want you don't want to live this life unless you live this life so um, again, if you have not, if you don't know anything about Arsene Lupin, that one, you have to find the books, audio book, let them read it to you. Let Morgan, Re- Morgan Freeman read it to you. Just do that. Lupin the third, the anime classic part w- one phenomenal. Part two is where I jumped in. Now those were done in the seventies. So it does look like that, but it's still comedy. I think there's an episode called funds, uh, or guns buns and fun in the sun shit like that so they're kind of dippy like that but it kind of feels like 
Trippy Dick Van Dyke with Austin Powers, Blacklist, and Ocean's Eleven. All great things, all mixed together. They all have their place. There's comedy, there's jokes, uh, wacky racer type comedy, but it, it's a nice ride, and it gives you the backstory. If you want to just jump into something that's got modern art and a modern take, part four and part five, those are great places. Beautiful art. Monkey Punch is just cr- continuing to create masterpieces, but that's where I jump in for that. Uh, the 3D film, I'm going to check it out. It looks very fun, but you got to watch the Netflix series. That shit is nice. And with that, that's going to cover segment two. Let's take a pause for the cause and come back for the last part of the show, segment three, anime and manga of the month. We'll be right back with episode 249 of the Elijah Bailey Show. The Bailey Bugle. I'm back to round out this some bitch. All right, we talked about Lupin the third. We talked about Arsene Lupin. We talked about Lupin as portrayed by Omar. Um, you guys got to watch these series. You got to read the books. You got to watch the movies. Do all the things. But let's go into anime and manga of the month. Now I've been talking about these all month. If you guys have not watched them yet, bam right. That way, I let, when I did this earlier, is it, it's it's a whole thing, um, but we have Onyx Equinox, a Mexican American animated streaming television series created by Sophia Alexander for Crunchyroll. It is based on the mythologies of Mesoamerica, featuring deities of Aztec, Maya, and Zaptec myth. Um, there's another series on Netflix that is Seis Manos. So this one's on Crunchyroll. Seis Manos is on Netflix. If you watch uh, that one, that one is another uh, Mexican-made anime, Mexican-American anime, which is crazy because it's martial arts, zombies, drug cartels, and family. The only thing that's missing is pizza, and then that would like be a Ninja Turtles fucking series. But watch Seis Manos on Netflix, but also watch on Crunchyroll Onyx Equinox. You don't even need an account. Just go to Crunchyroll create a free account just watch as a guest watch through the commercials if you don't want commercials just pay for account you know it's it's cheap i do Crunchyroll. actually i do vrv 9.99 a month and you get all access to everything rooster teeth um nickelodeon crunch roll all that shit you do that boom you can watch it but the gods are at war for the future of humanity, and an Aztec boy named Izel finds himself caught in the middle of their dangerous game. In order to save humankind, he must complete an impossible task, uh, closing the five gates to the underworld. So now what really happens, he has to basically navigate through life as a child. Like, do I trust you? Do I not trust you? Uh, once I learn kind of like the secret behind humanity or what you know, humanity could devolve to, Am I still going to choose to save you, man? Do you or not? It's 12 episodes, VRV, Crunchyroll, again, Onyx, Equinox. It is worth the watch. Last but not least, manga. Now, I've been reading a lot of great shit, 
if you're watching Jujutsu Kaisen, read the motherfucker. That's good. Uh, uh, what else? Um, Ghost Seer or Phantom Seer, Blood Oath, Ghost Reaper Girl. But this one right here, Black Torch, I, I flew through this super fast. Black Torch. Um, it is on Viz Media, one ninety nine a month. You get access to ten thousand uh, manga chapters a day. Super cheap. You can read everything that you ever wanted to read, from Inuyasha to Dragon Ball, all the way up to My Hero Academia, to Jujutsu Kaisen and Black Clover. Uh, but as an, a descendant of Shinobi, Jiro Azuma has been learning ninja techniques his entire life. But in addition to that, he also has the ability to talk to animals. Uh, one day, when he rescues a strange black cat named Rago, he learns that the world is filled with spirits called Mananoke that can take the form of both people and animals. However, their meeting is cut short when they are attacked by a hostile Mononoke who is after Rago's power. And that's the whole deal. Rago was trapped in this slumber, like this pillar, a ceiling pillar. His his power was so vast, they had to trap him. And he's been trapped for era after era. Once he gets broken out, this boy finds him, he defends him, and again, he's like, oh, this is a stupid human. Why is he talking to me? I'm, I'm a cat. Why did he, he doesn't understand me. He's like, yeah, I understand you. He's like, oh, shit. And he's like, well, I'm not a cat. I'm a Mononoke. And he's like, no, that's not true. They're not real. And then, boom, this other one appears. They start battling. Uh, I can't give away spoilers, but, again, they become power uh, partners, and he lets him borrow his powers, kind of like Ichigo Kurosaki style. And... They just keep having Mononoke after Mononoke after Mononoke come after Rago. But I will say this one had a real motherfucking G-ass villain to where, like, you ever see a villain when they're, they're like, coming up? They're like, man, I can't wait to fuck you up. And then they get to that rise of power, like, yeah, that's why I fucked you up. Then you see the downfall come, like, man, I will still fuck you up. And then they're dying, I'm like, ah, but I fucked you up. That's the kind of villain that you see in this series. Like, no matter where he is, no matter what happens, he will fuck you up. Uh, if he dies, he will fuck you up. But he goes out like a G when he first meets Rago. He goes, you know what? I'm, I'm going to save this for later. And Rago gets riled up. He starts releasing his power. And he does some eyes and shit. And then bounces right out. And you're like, that set the tone for the story. So again, Black Torch is on Viz Media, one ninety nine a month. Gets you access to 10,000 uh, manga chapters a day. Uh, so it's worth it. But that wraps up today's Bailey Bugle. We talked about Lupin the Third. I had to go in deep on it because it's one of my favorite series. It's up there within my top ten of all time cosmic series franchises. Now, I said franchise. Now, you have a few franchises. You have the Gundam franchise. You have Lupin. You have the Pokemon franchise. You have the Inuyasha franchise. You have Dragon Ball. So I'm talking about franchises, okay? Um, we had this discussion last episode. Is Black Clover better than, or not? No, 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 no. We're not having that conversation yet. We'll go, is Jujutsu Kaisen better than um, Demon Slayer? And I think me, the Buck, the Monica, all said yes, just because of what it's done so far with the limited volume sales in the manga. The world is very, very unique. Demon Slayer was unique. Demon Slayer is unique, but it reminds me a lot of Inuyasha. And don't get it twisted, Demon Slayer, I had that motherfucker Tanjiro tattooed on my back. So I, I know who he is. I, he takes that breath. He follows the arrows. He moves. He moves with the water. That shit. He was going through the forest, dodging the logs, moving, getting his ass beat. God, I love the series, but Jujutsu Kaisen's got it. Because even in the manga right now, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? So... Dude, Demon Slayer is cold. Demon Slayer is cold. It starts out saying, hey, you know what? There's some bad shit here. I should probably watch out because I could fuck some shit up that I love. Damn, that's fuck some shit up that I love. Just like Inuyasha said, hey, is that your son? He's half demon. Fuck him. Bow! Just slap him. Mama don't get no respect. Daddy fucking. If you haven't watched Inuyasha, sorry. Spoilers after all this time. Inuyasha's daddy's dead. 
He's gone. He fell in love with a human, and he got his half demon. Fucks up his whole life. But I love the series. I want to see Inuyasha and Sonru transform into big ass wolves like the dad. But that wraps up the Bailey Bugle. I got to go. I've got shit to eat. I've got more Death Wish coffee to drink. Why? <laughs> because I want to die. And um, there's some movies to watch. Make sure HBO Max that has access to Adult Swim on it, as well as Studio Ghibli. You got Funimation. You got Hulu, VRV, Crunchyroll, High Dive. Um, Amazon Prime, perfect place to watch a shit ton of anime that are both cataloged on Crunchyroll and Funimation. And I think, yes, it is time right now that Gundam, Mobile Suit Gundam uh, 0079, just dropped on Crunchyroll. They just got the fucking license today. So if you want to start watching that shit, do it. Uh, what I saw was 43 episodes. I tried to play episode one, but it was dropping at 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific, so I couldn't see it yet. But I remember that being a 75 episode season, I thought. So I'm going to see, I'm going to go back on there and see. But again, Mobile Suit Gundam, boom, start day one. The shit that, watch it. You you will see Char dodge fucking laser bullets, bro. Uh, that's some good shit. But thank you guys for joining me. I got to bounce out. Watch uh have a great day watch anime this has been the bailey bugle next week i got some new shit for you and wednesday night a little bit of anime is coming with episode 102 we got some new shit for you we had the a little bit of uh combo last time and uh i don't know just just bring your pens and paper it's it's time to uh you know get those lessons back in it's always time to get those lessons back in but i'll catch your ass in the next podcast i'm out Always time to get those lessons back in, but I'll catch your ass in the next time.